just a, that's an old picture. Um, hi, everyone. I am excited to be here at InfoBeep Shift Miami. And today I'm going to be talking about powering micro front ends at the edge. I hope you take something out of this talk. I'm Gift. I work as a developer advocate at Cloudflare. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on any social media platforms using the handle Laura Gift um, underscore. Quick show of hands. How many of you are familiar with this GIF or meme? OK, pretty much everybody. OK, um, I'm going to try and create a scenario and hope that it matches what this picture shows. So essentially, this is a guy, a dog, a puppy, whatever, in a room with fire. And you would expect a typical reaction would be to run out, call for help, or do something, you know, rather than sitting down, sipping your coffee, and saying everything is fine, right? Um, let's all imagine that we're at this guy for a second, right? What would you do in this scenario? Would you like sit there or ask for help? Um, this pictures precisely how many developers that are building monolith applications currently feel, right? Because of course, when you're dealing with large monolith apps, it gets difficult to scale. You, you're getting asked by product teams to keep adding features. You're also still expected to ensure your application has optimal performance, which is a lot of you know, things to do. And it's just a pain to build. Uh, instead of panicking as the developer in question, you're just there sitting trying to hack away the application that you're building and authoring it's fine, if that makes any sense, if that scenario captures um, exactly what that dog um, there is doing in the room. But yeah, um, I just quickly want to show you the life circle of a monolith front end. Um, if you're not familiar with a monolith, a monolith application is essentially a app, an app that is built as a single unit. So you have the front end, the back end, the database logic all infused in one application. And typically you have like one team working on that, right? Over the years, we've seen different adoptions of um, services like microservices come into play. Microservices essentially um, split up the backend logic into several different services, meaning that the backend logic um, has like different teams working on it and is split up by functionality. But the problem is the front end still remains the same, right? It's still the large monolith front end. And of course, as front end developers, if you work in a large scale application like that, you would possibly feel like the dog earlier. Um, so yeah, what are the challenges of monolith front ends in this case? The first problem that I found is that it becomes slow over time. Also, the user experience of the application can suffer. Um, an additional thing to note is when you have a large application that several teams are working on as a single unit, it, you can over time incur technical debt which of course is not the best um, way to work if you're working in that type of team. And one last one I'll share is it takes super long for you to ship code. The development circles become very complex because of course there's so many dependencies in, in, in your application that you have to deal with. Well, that's good. And that birthed like something, a uh, concept called micro front ends, right? So, the front-end development community saw what the back-end devs did with microservices and figured out it would be nice for us to also adopt that for front-end. So that's essentially what micro front-ends are. They're actually your application broken up into several composable, de independent, deployable parts. So you have several different components that are shipped. And they rely on specific um, technology stack. So you can even have a micro front end that has some part of it being written in React, some part of it being written in Vue, and so on. So looking at the previous architecture that I shared, that would switch up a lot to look like something like we have on screen. So you have, instead of having like teams that are all coupled together working on the front end, and then in a situation where they, are, they have microservices, have a separate services team for the back end, you have something that looks like a vertical team where you have each functionality um, splitted independently that you, you have a front end, back end, sometimes a DevOps person handling specific parts of an application. So using an e-commerce app as an example, you have a team working on checkout. There's a front end, back end DevOps team there. You have the same 
apply to the rest of the um, different type of teams that is outlined there. So let's take a look at an example app that I'll show you. Um, this is a micro front end application. The good thing here to note is that what you see is a singular application, but it's actually split up into different components that are independent, right? They are deployed independently, and there are essentially several components that are being put together to form a single application. This is, let's assume this is a client-side app, right? Everything is being deployed on the client side. Say we're using React, for example. That is great. In essence, it helps with team velocity, like you have several teams split into smaller groups that are working on specific parts of the applications. But the problem with client-side micro front ends is, first, you would have the JavaScript being loaded every single time in your application, and then this would, over time, cause your um, app to become slow, um, reducing the performance of the app. There's also a possibility that when you have your micro front ends built on the client side, it's impossible to shake all the unused libraries that you possibly have in your micro front end. And then finally, server side rendering right now is helpful, especially for performance and also SEO purposes. So that's also going to be lacking if you are building everything on the client side. And that's why I am very excited to be talking to you about how you can actually build your micro front ends on the edge, right, using Cloudflare workers. Now, if you're not familiar with Cloudflare workers, it's a JavaScript runtime that allows you to build um, your applications on the edge or on Cloudflare's global network. Right now, we have over 275 um, points of presence across the globe, so you're building essentially JavaScript functions and shipping it to um, several of those um, networks. Let's quickly take a look at the script uh, as an example. So this is an example Cloudflare Worker script. Essentially what it does is take some um, JSON value and returns it to the browser information about this conference. Um, that's the syntax for writing a worker. So you have an export default fun function, and then the fetch request that you make. In, in this case, this is a fetch um, worker. There's also scheduled workers if you want to make like cron triggers and all of that. Okay, let's get into the meat of this talk. How do you actually build micro front ends with work, Cloudflare workers? Um, the, the, the microservices team, at, sorry, micro front ends team and developer experience team at Cloudflare actually went on to um, build out this architecture and created a POC as well to see if it's possible to do this in, um, on top of Cloudflare workers. So it's termed fragment architecture, and I'll explain that to you. So typically, you'd have uh, several parts of your front-end components split into several different um, components that are deployed independently. Now take the same knowledge of that, and instead what you have is separate fragments in your application that are Cloudflare workers functions that are deployed independently, right? So in order to make it work, you have two things. You have a parent fragment and a child fragment, right? So the main worker that you see there is actually the parent fragment. And on the other side, you have several different components that are independent workers that are then deployed. It's also possible to even compose your um, fragments to have nested um, fragments on top of what you currently have. I will quickly show you this in, let me see if I can do this. Okay. Uh, it's not working. Okay. I'll show you this in a real world application. Yeah. So this is an example demo app that uses uh, micro front ends on Cloudflare workers in action. Right now, what you see is just a Cloud Gallery application, straightforward, right? But I'll go ahead and turn on the show seems button here. So essentially what you see here is the separate worker that was in the architectural diagram. They are all composed together to form this application. The amazing thing is that all of these, the, the, the header is an independent worker on its own. If I go back, well, this is not full screen, so, okay. The body is its own independent worker that has been shipped and how, 
How is it possible that they all come together to form this application? They are all being streamed to the main worker, which is the um, entire container of this app um, that you see here. So let's take a look at the project structure of how that is possible. So I mentioned that a Cloudflare worker function can be a JavaScript um, script file. Here, the individual fragments that we have are all located in its own site, um, site directory or project folder, if you like. Um, the body, it's its own worker that's deployed independently. The footer, it's its own worker. The filter component, so all of these are separate workers that are deployed in independently, right? And they're all pieced together and streamed using the main fragments. Um, you might be wondering, by gift, how is that possible? It's possible using something called service workers, right? So on top of Cloud, Cloudflare um, developer platform, we, we thought of this like, if you are trying to make communications between one worker to another worker and you're using HTTP requests, also would affect the performance because you have to make a request to get data from maybe the filter fragments to pass it on to the, to the main fragments. But with service bindings, you can actually do worker-to-worker -worker communication effectively using configuration set in your um, um, configuration file. So the example that I have there, Cloudflare Workers, if you're familiar with it, has a configuration file called wrangler.toml. So in there, you can add the separate different fragments or child components that you would like to piece together to form your singular application. Um, so here, you, you, you pass in a binding, which is the name of the fragment, and then the service, which is the name of the actual worker that you've deployed. Um, why would you, like, what's the benefit of building all of this in the first place, right? You can as well keep working on your Monolith app. I think one of the core benefits of building micro front end application, especially on the, on, the, on the edge, is that you get encapsulation out of it. So you can control whatever several teams own. So imagine this is a um, large scale app, for example, where you have like 200 front end teams working on it. Now you take that and you split it up into several different services or um, components and have specific teams working on that. Overall, that would increase the team's velocity, would also help with shipping um, things faster because you have several teams focused on you know, different things and it's not just one singular unit. Overall, building your application all on the server because each of the workers that I shared are actually individual quick application. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the quick um, framework, but each worker is using Quick under, under the hood, and the benefit of using Quick, of course, is that you ship very little JavaScript, right? Um, that also would improve the core web vitals of your application, leading to better performance. You can also deploy fragments independently. You can see that I also shared that it's composable, meaning that you can build on top of the fragments that you have. The, the I'll just show you this example quickly. The body fragment has two different fragments in it. It has a filter and the gallery. And depending on your um, situation or your use case, you can have multiple um, nested fragments included in your um, worker. So yeah, that's me just scratching the surface of this. There is also a possibility for you to do um, incremental build or adopting of all of this in your application because, of course, as a platform, you're not essentially going to like throw away all you already have and start all over from scratch. No, so it's also possible to independently. Sorry, it's also possible to incrementally adopt all of this in your already existing application. So you can have like a React app and start breaking it down into smaller components and have that deployed to worker. If you'd like to learn more about all of what I've shared here, there are like deep dive blog posts that goes through how you can actually do this, including the incremental adop adoption of um, um, micro front ends in your already existing application. Please um, scan the QR code if you'd like to um, get the links to the blog post that I shared and also links to the slides as well. Thank you. <laughs>